Hey there guys, especially sa mga kagaya ko na babagsak sa math. Welcome again, it's me Kevin Rick and today we will be having tree diagram and fundamental counting principle. But before we proceed, kindly subscribe down below and I hope I can help you with this video. Let's go! Minus two pi minus three six pi x plus Let's start with the tree diagram. So, ano ba ang gamit ng tree diagram? So, tree diagram is kind of like a tool na ginagamit para ma-determine natin yung mga outcomes in an event at yung number of possible outcomes. Paano? Okay, so let's have this example. Determine the number of possible outcomes when two coins are tossed. Okay, so just imagine nag-toss ka ng dalawang coins. Ilan yung possible outcomes? So, we have here coin A. And coin B. Iba kung nag-toss tayo, pwedeng tails or pwedeng head. Right? But, dalawang coins ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. So, di ba kung nag-toss tayo, pwedeng yung isa, yung coin A, pwede siyang tail. Pwede din namang tail si coin B. Right? Or, pwedeng si coin A ay tail, pwedeng si coin B ay Head. So, same is true dito. Pwedeng head yung coin A. Pwede din namang tail yung coin B. And so on. So, ito ang tinatawag nating tree diagram. So, dito na generate natin lahat ng possible outcomes. So, ano yung mga possible outcomes na yun? Both can be tails. Coin A can be tail. Coin B can be head. Pwedeng si coin A ay head, pwedeng si coin B ay tail, and then both can be heads. So there are how many outcomes? There are actually four possible outcomes. So see, tree diagram na generate natin, I mean, na determine natin lahat ng possible outcomes, and from this, there are four possible outcomes all in all. So yun ang gamit ni tree diagram. Let's have another example. Sarah Hieronimo is a popular concert artist. Suppose she is planning a concert tour in three cities, Manila, Cebu, and Davao. In how many ways can she arrange her tour schedule? So um, Sarah Hieronimo is thinking about how she can arrange her tour schedule. So kung pag-isipan natin, pwedeng magko-concert siya first sa Cebu. And then, wedding after Cebu, she will go to Manila. And then after Manila, she will go to Davao. So, marami ang pwedeng tour schedules niya. So, tingnan natin lahat ng mga possible tour schedules niya by using the tree diagram. So, first concert, second concert, and then the third concert. So, sa first concert, pwede niyang uunahin sa Manila. So, after Manila, pwedeng Cebu or Davao. Tama? So, may dalawa siyang choice for the second concert. So, Manila, Cebu, of course, definitely, third niya si Davao. And then, of course, dito naman, so, first sa Manila, second sa Davao, of course, third sa Cebu. Are we done? Well, actually, not yet. Kasi, Pwede din naman niyang unahin sa Cebu, right? So from Cebu, she can go to Manila. From Manila, she will go to Davao. Or from Cebu, she will go to Davao and then have her concert last in Manila. Or hindi pa tayo tapos kasi pwede, niyang, pwede niya ding unahin sa Davao. So, same process ang gagawin hanggang sa ma-generate natin lahat ng mga possible outcomes. So, ito lahat ang mga possible tour schedules niya. So, kung bibilangin natin yung tip ng tree diagram, malalaman natin yung number of possible outcomes. So, we're going to count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there are 6 ways 
in which she can arrange her tour schedule. So, ganun po guys ang gamit ng tree diagram. Si tree diagram, pwede nating malaman lahat ng mga possible outcomes as well as yung number of possible outcomes. But, what if we are given a problem kung saan medyo marami ang outcomes na involve? What if it involves like a thousand possible outcomes? Parang medyo hindi na practical si tree diagram doon. So, dito na papasok si fundamental counting principle. So, we use the fundamental counting principle to determine large number of occurrences. Yun nga yung sinabi ko kanina, kung aabot na sa hundreds or thousands yung mga possible outcomes na talagang hindi na practical si tree diagram. So, let's have an example. Suppose you have three shirts, three pants, and two pairs of shoes. How many outfit combinations can you make? So, imagine if you have this uh, clothes, and then you are going to like mix and match. Um, gagawa ka ng porma from these choices. So, kung itri-tri diagram natin yan, it will look like this. Okay? So, si shirt one, you can pair it with pant one, and you can wear the shoes one with this combination. Okay? And so on and so forth. So, maraming porma ang pwede nating mabuo from this uh, clothes. So if we're going to count the tips of the tree diagrams, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 12, 18, there are 18 possible outfit combinations. Okay? So imagine na lang, no, kapag ka, um, if you are taking an exam and that, and that nagmamadili ka and ganito yung question, mag tree tree diagram ka pa ba? Well, actually, it's, it's time consuming and it's so... Paano ba tong fundamental counting principle para mas shortcut ang pagsagot natin sa problem? So actually, we are just going to multiply the number of shirts, the number of pants, and the number of pairs of shoes. So if we're going to multiply them, okay, 3 times 3 times 2, saan ko kinuha mga to? Ito po. 3, 3, 2. If we're going to multiply, the answer is 3 times 3. It's 9 times 2, it's 18. So the answer is 18. Same din lang naman yung sagot kapag kay nag tree diagram tayo. So that is the fundamental counting principle. It's more convenient than the tree diagram. Okay? So let's have another example. Okay. So if we are going to lock our phones, there are a lot of methods. Pwedeng face recognition, pwedeng fingerprint, pwedeng alphanumeric password, pwedeng six-digit, or ito yung pinaka-common, and ito din naman yung ginagamit ko, it's the four-digit PIN code. Alam ko na yung karaniwang PIN code na ginagamit is 1234, oh sorry, 40000 or 1111Y. Yan. Marami actually, maraming pin codes ang pwede nating ma-generate from this format. Pero the question is, how many pin codes are possible? Ilan lahat nakagaya nito ang possible sa format na to? Okay. So, ganito. So, this is how we're going to apply the fundamental counting principle. We draw four blanks that represents the four-digit pin code. Now, if you're going to think of it, so first blank, we can use any digit from 0 to 9. Tama? Ilan ba yung digits from 0 to 9? They're actually 1, 2, 3. Ito po. Ilan po yung digits na pwede nating gamitin for the first blank? They're actually 10. Dito then we can actually use any digit from 0 to 9. Diba? Pati din actually dito. Same is true with the last blank. So after filling up the blanks, we are going to multiply. Okay. So if I'm going to multiply it using my calculator, but actually, hindi kailan ng calculator, you just count the number of zeros. One, two, three, four, and then one. There are 10 possible pin codes. Okay, so ganun po ang fundamental counting principle. We draw blanks to represent the digits, the number of digits involved, 
And then, ano yung ilalagay dito sa mga blanks? Kung ilan yung um, possible digit na pwede nating i-input for that blank. So, medyo magulo ba? Let's have the last example. Okay, ito na. Ito yung common. Ito yung common na example sa mga books, sa mga textbooks. Now, new license plates for cars in the Philippines come in three letters and four digits format. Okay, so parang ganito, NDA8962. Pwede din namang AAB1122, di ba? But the question here is, how many license plates in this format are possible? And then we have another question na mas mahaba. And it says here, how many license plates in this format are possible if letters and digits should not be repeated? So, dito sa second uh, question, my condition siya na hindi dapat maulit yung letters and digits. Okay, so tingnan natin yan mamaya. So, let's try to answer the first one. So, what to do? First step is to draw blanks to represent the letters or digits. So, since ganito yung format, one, two, three, three letters. One, two, three, four. Four digits. Now, think about this in this first blank. So, since letters ng involved dyan, we're talking about A to Z. So, English alphabet po. So, there are how many letters from A to Z? There are actually 26 letters. So, any letter from A to Z pwede natin i-input sa first blank, right? And how many choices do we have? We have 26 letters. Okay? Parehas din dito sa next blank. Parehas din dito. Okay? So, nakukuha ba? Saan ko kinukuha yung mga numbers na to? There are how many letters from English alphabet from A to Z? There are 26 letters. Okay. Next, dito naman sa next blanks, digits ng involved. So, numbers. So, dito po, sa unang blank, we can use any number from 0 to 9, right? So, ilan ba yung bilang ng numbers from 0 to 9? There are actually 10. So, parehas din dito, dito, and then sa last blank. So, after filling out the blanks, we are going to multiply. So, 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So, I'm going... So, I'll be using my um, calculator again. And the answer is, yeah, it's actually like millions. So, there can be millions of license plates. The answer here is 175,760,000. Okay? So, di ba marami? Of course, maraming sasakyan sa Pilipinas. And, you know, each sasakyan should have a unique plate number. So, hindi dapat pwedeng maulit yung uh, plate number. There shouldn't be duplicates. Diba, dati yung plate number is tatlong letter tapos tatlong digit. Ngayon, dinagdagan nila ng isa pang digit para, you know, to cater yung mga bagong sasakyan maybe. Okay, so let's have uh, the last question. How many license plates in this format are possible if digits and letters should not be repeated. So, walang letter or number ang dapat maulit. So, first step, draw your blanks. So, one letter, apat numbers. So, dito sa mga blank that involves the letters, so first one, you can input any letter from A to Z. So, there are how many letters from A to Z? There are 26 letters. Ngayon, since nagamit mo na yung isang letter dito, dapat hindi mo na siya pwedeng ulitin sa next blank. So, since nagamit na yung isa, ilan na yung natira for the next blank? There are 25. Kasi nga, hindi pwedeng maulit yung letter. Now, if you're going to look at it, um, na-occupy na yung dalawang blanks, meaning nagamit na yung dalawang letters. So, since nagamit na yung dalawang letters, 24 na lang yung pwede mong i-input sa last blank. Gets ba? Now, let's proceed to the blanks that involve the digits. On the first blank, you can input any digit from 0 to 9. 
there are how many digits from 0 to 9? There are 10 digits. So dito, na-occupy na yung isang blank, meaning nagamit na yung isang number. So since nagamit mo na yung isang number, mag-deduct ka ng isa. Kasi hindi pwedeng maulit yung number na yun. So same is true, na-occupy na yung dalawa, magiging 8 na ang pwede mong gamitin. So na-occupy na yung tatlo, 7 na yung pwede mong gamitin na digits para sa last blank. So I hope um, you are following. Now, after na fill out lahat ng blanks, we're going to multiply. So, multiply. Using my calculator, the answer is like 78 million. 78 million, 624,000. So, yon guys, ang fundamental counting principle. Just imagine, no? Kung i-tree diagram mo to, it will like it will look like this, like you are going to write all the letters from A to Z. Tapos write mo ulit from, write mo ulit yung mga letters from A to Z. Tapos magbra-branch out ulit ng another one. Yun. So, di ba? Um, we use the fundamental counting principle for convenience. But it depends naman sa question. If the question is asking for, parang ganito, what are the possible outcomes? So, kung yun ang tinatanong, talaga mag-tree diagram ka para ma-generate mo lahat ng mga possible outcomes. But if the question is asking for the number of possible outcomes, yeah, I think it's better to use the fundamental counting principle. Mas madali, mas convenient, mas practical. Especially na kung maraming outcomes ang involved. So, that's it guys for today's video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.